In this course, we will talk about performance metric, uh, detailed second part of performance metrics. So, we saw uh, performance metric like recall, precision and accuracy in the last video. Let us look at more detailed uh, performance metrics which compass different classifiers. Consider there is a um, binary classification problem and uh, the classes are 0 if student will not pass the course, 1 the student will pass the course, there are only 2 classes so it is a binary classification problem. And you have the table like this, um, y i is the actual num value and y predict is the output of the classifier. And uh, we computed the confusion matrix and we computed precision, recall and accuracy, right. The focus was on predicting students who will pass the exam. So, I want to tell that. So, the true pass due is focus is on the students who are, will pass the exam. If I have um, focus on um, 0 that is who will not pass the exam, what will be the change? I am not going to discuss uh, what will happen if you focus on 0 in this video, but this is for you to think uh, take it as extra work. So, please check Wikipedia, uh, there are very good resources. How to check Wikipedia find this particular page? Just type precision, recall, uh, accuracy, Wikipedia and Google you will get the page. Let us check the next problem in uh, classification. Consider your binary classification problem that is uh, two classes, the performance of predicting which students will get more than 90 marks in final exam and uh, which students will not get more than 90 marks in final exam. And uh, you have uh, n equal to 1000 samples that is 1000 students data from historical uh, semesters and courses. Uh, as you know uh, there are very few num uh, number of students will get more than 90 marks, they will get a university ranks or something like that. So, the number will be very less. So, consider there are only 20 students who got more than 90 and uh, other 980 students got less than 90 marks. This data set is um, imbalanced. Uh, for example, in a true value there are only 20 uh, positive uh, classes and 980 negative class that is they will not score more than 90 marks. So, if we have this kind of imbalanced data set, what will happen? So, let us compute. Uh, precision, accuracy and uh, uh, recall. Accuracy is uh, 980 correct uh, plus 9 correct uh, 989 by 1000, 98.9 percent is the very highest accuracy you can get and precision is it predicted all the 9, uh, uh, 9 divided by 9 plus 0 is 900 percent is precisely predicting, recall rate is 9 by 11. So, what do you think about this? Um, is it good? Uh, this this value is interesting. Let us see. Consider you have a two um, you have two uh, classifiers. Uh, the results are not same as what we discussed in the last slide. This is a bit different. Consider there are two classifiers which use the same thousand data set and uh, which gave the results like this: accuracy in percentage that 98.9 percentage, and precision 34, recall 45 percentage. Classifier here you might have used decision tree or here you would have used some naive based classifier. Classifier 1, classifier 2 results on the same data set is given. Why it has a very high accuracy but very poor uh, recall and precision rate? And which classifier is better? Please pause the video, think about it. Uh, take a minute, think about it why these two uh, classifiers give really very accuracy and very less uh, poor precision and recall think about it and uh, which classifier is better. After you uh, this done your answer you can resume to continue. So, the reason for very high accuracy is imbalanced data set right. Um, given that uh, um, the data is 980 is positive or uh, negative. So, if a system which classifies everything as negative still will get a 98 percentage uh, accuracy no need to uh, even try to create a new logic, new rules, nothing. The simple rule can be classify all the classes into majority class. So, you will get high accuracy if it is imbalanced data set. And uh, which classifier is better? Given the data set it is not enough to say which classifier is good because it depends on the research goal. If my interest is on precision, my interest on uh, recall based on that uh, which classifier is better can be told. So, in order to make a decision 
uh, which classifier is better or uh, which performance is doing good, we need a score or we need a metric which combines precision and recall or some other kind of metrics. Let us look at those metrics in this video. The one of those metric is F score or F1 score. It actually the harmonic mean of precision and recall. What is harmonic mean? Harmonic mean is simple, uh, it is a one kind of averaging technique. It is there like a two values since precision and recall. So, harmonic mean is simply it is a 2 divided by 1 by precision plus 1 by. If you simplify this, you will get the results for harmonic mean that will be like a 2 into uh, precision into recall divided by precision plus recall. So, it gives uh, importance uh, to both precision and recall, right. So, is it good? Should we give importance to both precision and recall? In the last slide, I mentioned there are some research questions which will need uh, better precision compared to recall, some research questions which need uh, better recall than precision. Can you uh, guess or can you think of one such a research problem? This is not the activity, but you can pass it and think about that. So, we will talk about that such research questions later, but please think about it. In order to avoid this challenging that uh, the F score is giving importance to both precision and recall, uh, what we can do? Um, we can have a variation of F1 score uh, computation methods that is it gives a more importance to precision, you can add a weight to it when you are doing the precision and recall uh, computation. So, there are variation of F1 score that can be considered uh, if you give weights to precision, but we are not discussing that in this video. You can check the Wikipedia page on uh, what is the formulations to do that. So, there is other metric uh, which is developed by Jacob Conan, it is called Kappa. Uh, in Kappa, it is developed to measure the inter-rater agreement of two raters. What is inter-rater agreement of two raters? Let us take an example. Um, so, there are two raters, uh, two researchers are watching the students facial expressions. There are say 10 students in the class or taking a class, attending a class. Two raters are uh, looking at the students facial expressions and uh, body gesture, the tone, everything, classifying them as uh, one of the affected states, bored, confused or uh, engaged, something like that. So, there are two, two raters, we cannot have two raters uh, for our complete research, you want to use one rater for five set of five students and another rater for five students. But how do we avoid the bias between these raters? So, that is called inter-rater agreement. Initially, we have to ask two raters to observe the same set of students and check whether the two raters agree on their classification. That is, um, if you have a class items to classify say boredom, confusion, engaged and you want to classify into two or three categories and how these two categories are uh, accepted by both raters. So, in order to measure whether there is agreement between these two raters, uh, Kogan's kappa is used. So, Kogan's kappa, uh, the formulation is k equal to PO minus PE divided by 1 minus PE. Let us see what is PO, PE and all. PO is the accuracy uh, from the confusion table, we can compute the accuracy which we computed in the last class. And PE is the hypothetical probability of chance agreement. What is the hypothetical prob probability that both raters um, will agree? Uh, it's like what is the minimum value they can agree? So, how to compute PE? Uh, it's a sum of estimated probability of that both raters agree for a k number of items. We will see example how to compute uh, kappa score. Let us take this uh, table, uh, let us understand the table first. There are two raters uh, looking at uh, students facial expressions. Uh, they looked at uh, so 40 plus 30 plus 30. So, they looked at around uh, 100 instances of facial expression. I am not telling 100 students, there might be 2 students, there might be 1 student, there might be like 50 student. But they have 100 instances of facial observations. Both observed all the 100, observa 100 instances, so 100 uh, instances. Uh, rater 1 said uh, at 40 times uh, first rated same as the rater 2, but rater 1 said that um, 20 more times student first rated, but rater 2 did not say that, okay. he might have said uh, not frustrated. 
So, this is a simple confusion table similar to what we saw in the classification problem. So, rater 1 and rater 2 agree they are frustrated, rater 1 and rater 2 not agreeing their frustration this is the uh, cross values that is rater 1 not agreeing it is frustration, but rater 2 marks as a frustration this is the um, wrongly classified problems there is no agreement between these two raters there is high agreement between these two raters. What is the accuracy simple to compute there is 40 plus 30 divided by total number of observations that is uh, 70 by 100 very simple to compute. Um, what is rater 1 s yes agreement uh, let us compute P e now what is the later 1 agreement is later 1 says yes for a um, 60 percent of time compared to uh, all 100 samples 60 percent of time he says yes that is 40 plus 20 60 this is 60 this is 40 this is a later ones agreement this is 50 and this is 50 if you just add these two values. Um, so, later one says 60 percent of time yes and later 2 says um, later 1 not says uh, yes for 40 percent of time that is later 1 saying no is 0.4 right. Uh, what, uh, what it says that later 1 has a bias of telling yes more compared to uh, no which means when you see a small slight expression in the face it might, might mark it as a frustrated that is the rate of 1 bias. In a rate of 2 it is equally uh, bias say for example it says 0.5 percent of time uh, say 0.5 probability a rate of 2 says the students are frustrated another 0.5 probability that is rate of 2 or uh, students are not frustrated. So, this is 0.5 and the rate of 2 saying no is also 0.5 this is from this value 50 by 100 and 50 by 100. So, what is the uh, probability that both raters will say yes that is simply uh, multiplying the raters 1 yes value into raters 2 yes value 0 0.6 from here 0 0.5 from here. So, if you compute there will be 0 0.3. Similarly, for uh, raters saying no will be um, that is 0 0.4 into 0 0.5 that will be 0 0.2. So, what is the observation uh, observation probability is like 0 0.3 that is yes value plus no value that is 0 0.5. This is the uh, we saw that uh, sum of hypothetical probability of chance agreement that is PE as a observation uh, accuracy we say. So, if you use the 0.7 value in the formula uh, you get the kappa score equal to 0.4 you can compute that uh, please apply that in the formula we uh, gave it in the previous slide and do that. Is k equal to 0.4 good is the question think about it um, if you want uh, you can pass and go and search on internet and see is kappa score 0.4 is good there uh, there is no um, answer uh, like no exact answer to this, but it depends on domain the k value uh, good or bad can be inferred. So, in this scenario that is uh, the both rater will agree will be 0 0.4 uh, that is not so good score for uh, uh, which is not a so good score for uh, inter rater uh, agreement reliability. So, how do you compute kappa uh, do you need to do it every time like this uh, it is a simple uh, website uh, which uses a term like a 2 cross 2 table confusion table you just enter the values in the table and say calculate it will calculate and give the kappa score this is the website and lot of tools like a um, uh, lot, lot of tools or uh, script languages have a library and the machine learning tools have the uh, library to compute kappa score easily. So, in this video we saw what is imbalanced data set that is uh, in a data set there are too many positive cases or too many negative cases and we in order to pick up the better performance or better performed classifier we have to combine uh, come up with a new score which combines accuracy, precision and recall. The one can be F score simple one to start with or the Kogan's kappa. Kogan's kappa is used widely uh, to pick the right classifier. We will we will look at uh, more uh, better classifiers or better metrics 
In next video we will uh, check uh, more metrics on picking the right classifier. Thank you.